Very welcome to this video on how to create a benchmarking table in Excel. A lot of you guys might have the need to create some benchmarking or reference values based on some GPS data for matches, it might be for jumping, sprinting, whatever you might need. You can, based on a raw data table, you can create some averages or maxes or whatever you would like to create. And we're going to show you in this video how to do that. We're going to cover quite a few things. We're going to look into the unique function, averages, dynamic duration criteria, and account ifs function. So let's just jump straight in. We're going to have a look at what we're going to create. And this is what. We are looking at the benchmarking table. So based on a given duration, based on some other criteria that it's a match and it's a match day and the given name, we have some benchmarking values. The number of games involved in this in these values, the total distance and a couple of other metrics. If I change this one to 30 minutes, you can see how straight away those values are updated. How can we create this one? Well, jump over to the next sheet and I will show you how to do that. We have an athlete database here. So it's just some raw data exported from a GPS system, similar to what you all guys have been involved with. So we'll just jump back in and see how we can do this then. The first thing we need to do is to create a list of athletes. So which athletes do we want included? And there's a few ways you can do this. You can just manually type them in. You can type in James Smith and there you go. But we're not going to do that. We're going to use, use the unique function. Type in equal, start typing unique, and you can see how this arrives. And what it's saying is that it will return a unique, the unique values from a range or array. So if we just hit tab, we select this one, we come in here, we select James Smith and we mark all the way down. We can just hit control shift enter down, sorry. And so we mark all of them. We close the parenthesis and we hit OK. And that is completely fine. This is a common error that you sometimes get. And what it is, is that the range is not blank. So spill range isn't blank. So essentially it means there is some information here. So you can see there is a, a old formula. So we'll just remove all of that and there you go. Now we have a unique list of all the athletes that is in that database there. You can of course add filters or criteria for what to include or not in this one. So if the match day is only the match day in values or if there is certain athletes for a certain date then the last season, you can include that as well. We will not cover that in this video, but that is possible with the unique function. The next thing we need to do now is to create the average total distance for all of these individual athletes. So we're just going to select equal, start typing average, and we have a couple of options then. We see the average if. So find the average for the cells specified based on a given condition or criteria. So we're going to have multiple criteria. The first thing is ask is which average would you like, which range, well, I would like it from the total distance. So come up here, scroll across. I know the total distance as is at the very end. We can just select that column. We can hit comma. Some of you guys in Excel might have semicolon as the separator. It could be dot, comma, whatever you can see here specified. I have a comma to separate. What it's asking for then is the criteria range one. Okay, so for that, we will just have the name. So based on the range of different names, you need to calculate the average. We can hit comma again. And what is the actual criteria? Well, it is the criteria range was the name. The criteria need to be the name. And we simply just select the first name and we can close the parenthesis. We can hit enter. And what is done there is that it's taking the average for all that data based on James Smith as the criteria. If we pull this down a little bit, you can see how that is modified for each. We can see how we just shift down this one for all of the athletes. So that is working perfectly fine. But we need some more criteria. First, we need to make sure that it's a match day because at the moment is all the days in that data set. So we can hit comma, we remove the parentheses, we hit comma so we get the criteria range two. And the range two will be the day type. So I would like that to be a match day. So you can see here, if you scroll down a little bit, we can see all the different other match types, which we don't want. 
So let's scroll up. We hit that we want the match type, and then we're gonna hit a comma. And the way we will do this one is to put in the in the apostrophes here. We put that the you need to be equal to match day, and we can close the parenthesis. Once we hit OK, you can see straight away we have some higher values. We can pull this down again, and you can see how we now have a lot higher values. The last criteria I would like to add is the duration. I would like that we have a dynamic function. So when I select 40 here, then he's filtering out all the values and only calculate the average when the game duration is more than 40 minutes. So we'll go again, remove the parentheses, hit comma, the criteria range three. And as you can imagine, we need to just have the total time. So the time column, we can hit comma. And also this one is slightly different. We need again, this sign, we need to say the over sign. So when it's over a given value, and that given value will be this column here. And we need to make sure that that's locked. So FN4, to make sure we have hit the dollar sign on each sign, so that's locked. So when we drag this value down, this cells, it stays looking into this column. If we hit close and OK, you can see how that seems to be working perfectly fine. And you see those values being added up. If I now select 75, you can see straight away we're starting to get some decent benchmarking values for the total distance. So this one is now working perfectly fine. We have all of these, we can modify this one, we can select zero, we can do whatever we want. And it's very important to make those dollar sign so you lock the cell because when we see here, it stays the same even if we pull this one further down. What you can do, can do now is just copy and paste this one and paste it in here and then just modify this one to be the sprint distance. So if we come in here, we find sprint distance Let's see, sprint distance is the column of X. So if we go in here, we change this one here to X and X, and we hit OK. We now have sprint distance instead. And you can do the same again for these two here. The last thing we want to do now is just to show how many games is included in this calculation. Is it one game? Is it 10 games? How uh, valid is that benchmark? How robust. So if we do this one, we can just select a count ifs function. So it's very similar to the one we did with average, but now we don't have the average range. Now it's just going to count. So what is the first criteria range? Well, you might have guessed it already. It's the name. So we can hit comma. We select the name. And then secondly, just make sure that it's a match day. So we select a day type. We hit equal match day. We can close the parenthesis and we can hit OK. And there we go. Now we have our number of games involved. So if we now select 50 as a criteria, oh, I forgot to include that as well. So we obviously need to do that as well. Let's come over here, total time. And that the time is over and is in this column, hit close, and you can see hopefully now that is working. So if we select the criteria of 75, you can see how that is now showing different games and different number of games. So that is working perfectly fine. So that's how you can create a benchmarking table in Excel. Hope you liked this video. If you have any questions, don't be shy to ask in the comments below and we will try to help you out as best as possible. See you soon.